So let's prove this theorem. This is an important theorem. If there is one theorem that you will ever learn from graph theory, it should be this one. We want to prove an equivalence. We want to prove that a graph G is Eulerian if and only if each vertex has even degree. Remember, we are assuming that G is connected. If it's not, there is not much sense talking about this because either you have isolated vertices and you can just remove them, or you have several components with edges and then it's impossible to go through all edges without lifting the pencil. So let's prove the easier direction first. Let's assume the graph is Eulerian and prove that each vertex has even degree. So whenever you have a trail, the trail will contribute the number two to the degree of each vertex's passes. So if you have a trail that is a walk that doesn't repeat edges, at each vertex, the trail will come in one edge and go out a different edge. So that's plus one coming in and plus one coming out. It increases the degree of the vertex by two. If now you have an Euler trail, then the Euler trail contains all the edges of the graph. So if a degree, if a vertex has a certain degree, then this whole degree comes from edges that are included in this uh, trail. But we just said that the trail contributes to to each vertex it passes. So if I have a vertex here and then the trail comes in, it comes out again, that is a contribution by two. Maybe the trail goes around the graph and comes back to this vertex, but then it still has to go out again on a new vertex. So I am contributing a new uh, two and so on. So the contribution is even and since all contributions come from this trail, each vertex has even degree. There are no other edges that can contribute to the degrees. So if the graph is Eulerian, then each vertex has even degree. Now let's show the other direction, and we'll do that by induction on the number of edges. So we want to show that a graph with m edges, where each vertex has even degree, is Eulerian. Let's start by the base case, smallest number of edges is zero. Well, a connected graph with zero edges is the null graph, so it has no edges. Clearly, the empty walk is an Euler trail. The walk where you take no steps at all, the walk that contains no edges at all, will contain all the edges of the graph because there are no edges at all. That's the easy part, the base step, it is done. Now, let's take the inductive step. Assume that you have a connected graph where the number of edges is positive. Since the graph is connected, there is no vertex ha that has degree zero. There are no isolated vertices. So each vertex has to have degree at least one, but since you're assuming that the degree is even, in fact, each vertex has to have degree at least two. Now comes a non-trivial fact that we'll deal with later, but believe me for the moment, any graph where the degree of each vertex is at least two will have a cycle. So since in our graph, the degree of each vertex is at least two, the graph contains a cycle. Delete the edges of this cycle. Then each component of the new graph will have fewer edges. So let's look at an example. Assume that the graph looks like this. So I have my graph where all degrees are even and at least two. And then I know that there exists a cycle and I delete the edges of this cycle. So maybe I'm looking at the cycle consisting of this part and I remove the edges of this cycle. So having done that, I am left with one connected component here, one connected component here, and one connected component that is just uh, an isolated vertex. Now, in this new graph, since I have deleted at least some edges, I will have fewer edges. And each component of this graph will then obviously have fewer than m edges. Also, if the degree of the vertices was even in the beginning, 
removing a cycle will not change that fact. Since if I remove a cycle, the cycle is contributing the number two to each vertex where it goes in. So if from an even number I subtract two, I still have an even number. So in summary, deleting this cycle, I now have components. Each component has fewer than m edges and each component has vertices only of even degree. Since the number of edges is smaller than m, I can use my induction hypothesis where I'm assuming that graphs with smaller numbers of edges that are connected with even degrees have Eulerian trails. So by induction, I'm assuming that each of these small components is Eulerian. And then I can combine these Euler trails from my small components to a large Euler trail, including all the edges of the graph as follows. I follow the cycle I deleted until I reach a non-trivial component. Then I follow the Euler trail of that component. Coming back to the cycle, I move on to the next non-trivial component and so on until I'm through with the graph. So in my example, maybe I would start here, then I go this uh, edge, then I follow the Euler trail here, then I go this edge, now I come to this component, I follow an Euler trail here, then I continue and go back to my original cycle, uh, my original vertex, and now I have completed the Euler trail. So this proves that if I have a connected graph where each vertex has even degree, then it is the graph is Eulerian. This completes the proof of Euler's theorem, except for this non-trivial fact that I claimed earlier about the graph having a cycle. So let's check this detail that it is indeed true. So the fact I claim now is that in any graph G, connected or not, Eulerian or not, if the degree of each vertex is at least two, then there is a cycle. So why is that? If G has a loop, then the loop itself is a cycle and we're done. There exists a cycle. If G doesn't have a loop, we start from a vertex and we construct a walk in the following way. At each vertex we come to where we have not been before, we go out on a different edge than the one we came in on. Why is this possible? Well, if I have a vertex here, I have never been here before, the degree of the vertex is at least two, so there are at least two edges, and I'm coming on on this edge, I will have at least one edge that I have not visited. Now, since the graph is connected, eventually, I will come back to a vertex I have already visited because at each vertex I have not already visited, I can go on because I will have edges to use until I come back to a vertex that I've already visited. Well, then the part of my walk from last time I visited this vertex till I came back to it is a cycle and we're done. So we have a cycle. So this missing piece is also true and this completes the proof of Euler's theorem.